when we are choosing native plants of course the the um nursery industry couldn't wait to get their hands on them and tinker and so forth plant breeders and by both by selection and by breeding um and i'm curious because we hear a lot about cultivars of native plants native ours as they've been called um oh, look, they're so, this is so beautiful. Oh, this is showy or this is better. It looks better in my garden. But then what are the insects that you were just speaking about? What are they saying? And I, I wonder what the kind of bottom line, as you know it now as a scientist, as an ecologist, what do you think is the, what are the worst things we've done <laughs> that, that make a, a native are less desirable in providing or less able to provide ecosystem services to those insects? And what are the things that are probably benign that are okay and not to worry about? Does that make any sense? So native yeah. ours. It's a huge question. Uh, you, you say, what uh -oh. is the bottom line? There is no bottom line because the answer is it depends. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say the worst thing we've done is to uh, make a double flower in terms of a pollinator. Yes. You have removed all of the pollinating services. It's twice as pretty. Um, it hangs on to that, that uh, thought that plants are just decorations. But it's you've removed the services. Uh, I would say the next worst thing would be taking a green leaf and making it red or purple. Yeah, that loads the leaf with anthocyanins that are feeding deterrents. And in terms of of nourishing the things that eat plants, uh, you've removed that that value. Uh, but but uh, we did a study looking at six six different traits and making a tall plant short or enhancing uh, uh, berry size or enhancing fall color, introducing disease resistance. None of those had any effect at all on on the insect herbivores. Now we didn't look at flowers, uh, so it is not a given that when you when you emphasize one particular genotype of a plant that it's going to hurt. its ecological function. I mean, the the, the classic example is Phlox uh, paniculata jenna, which was a natural variant found in Georgia. It has twice the flowers as the straight species, and it has twice the pollinators. Uh, right. So it wasn't selected by by humans, but it is, they brought it in, put a name on it. And and uh, so you cannot say that all cultivars are, are bad. You can't say all cultivars are good. It just depends. Okay. Um, but but I think to point out those two uh, things that when tinkered with, when flowers are made double and they're therefore inaccessible, their resources are inaccessible. And as you said, uh, when the anthocyanins are the pigments that have been um, that are that are favored in the leaves, which are not as tasty as chlorophyll, right? They're just not tasty like the green stuff. So no, they're, 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 Their deterrence, yeah. They, yeah, yeah. So, okay. All right. So those are two things that we can, when we're shopping for native plants, if we're seeing cultivars, we can say, that's getting a little riskier. I don't want to make that my main choice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One, one thing I always want to point out is that a cultivar is a, it's a genetic slice of, of the entire genome. Um, mm -hmm. And to per perpetuate that, they, most cultivars are cloned, which means you're creating a plant with zero genetic variability. And from an ecological point of view, we know that's not a good idea. It's not a good idea for disease resistance. It's not a good idea in, in, in adapting to climate change. We want as much genetic variability as possible. Um, so keeping that in mind, I, I wish, and I think it's starting to happen, but I, I want the nursery industry to offer the straight species as well and let the marketplace uh, decide. Because people who are who are landscaping primarily for restoration or ecological function, uh, they want genetic variability and we need to be supplying that.